If you want to get a job in cybersecurity, you really do need to have experience with vulnerability management, patch management, endpoint detection, cloud security. Those are the things that I teach on this channel. If you're interested, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, also, if you actually want access to the tools, then the membership on my channel, you can click on the membership button, join the cybersecurity mentorship program, and I will actually train you. I will give you access and counts in these tools. And I'll actually train you in these tools so that you will have real experience using enterprise grade tools. So that being the case, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you see right now I'm in Tenable Vulnerability Scan. I'm gonna go to the top level because in order to get to the scans, we wanna click Menu in the top left-hand side, choose Scans. And you see we have some scans already, here, but we're gonna create a new scan. Now in the previous uh, video, I showed how to set up Nessus Agents. So when I go here, you see I have an option to do Nessus Scanners. And I have Nessus Agent Scan. Nessus Scanner is more of a network scan, which means I have a device and I'm external and I'm scanning to a device over the network or over the internet. In this situation, we have an agent scan, which means we have a piece of software that's installed on the machine and we're actually scanning the device from on the machine. You get very good information um, because it's actually installed and they can see virtually pretty much everything on the machine. So we're gonna do a Nessus Agent Scan I'm going to choose basic agent scan here and I'm just going to say basic agent scan just for clarity all right and then comments here I strongly encourage you always put comments to kind of describe what you're doing that's just a good habit now that I created this so the thing is I have all these groups here and so I'm going to select one of the groups because when you create a scan you have to target a group and that's what I showed in the previous video so if you did not see that, go back and watch that. So I'm going to target the technology interpreters group. The scan window, basically, this is how long the scan will go before I could terminate. So maybe you don't want a scan to run for nine hours. That's not really normal, but at times, depending on the, the way you have the scan configured, it could run for a long period of time. And so in that situation, you want to make sure that you configure the scan to stop at a certain period. And so that's where the scan window comes into play. Now, once we do that, we do three hours. This is pretty typical. This is what I do in my main job. Now we do want to schedule the scans. Now here's the thing. A lot of organizations, they run scans potentially on a monthly basis. The reality is you should be running vulnerability scans on a daily basis. They literally change every day and they're actually changing by the hour. So vulnerabilities, and I mean hundreds of vulnerabilities are continuously being released, right? And so if you're only scanning once a month, you're going to get this big batch of things, but what those vulnerabilities could have been exploited multiple times, right? By the time you do your next scan. So I do recommend that you do daily scans. Uh, we're going to say frequency daily here, uh, every day. We're going to repeat it every day. You start right now. Uh, a lot of times what we do on our, uh, the job that I work for, like when I'm working with customers, we do like a 10 o'clock thing, because here's something to understand when you do a tenable scan, it's not like the device can be offline and you still get scan data. Like when it comes back online, it's going to scan. Tenable is going to set up these scans and it's going to scan at a certain time period every day. So if you set it like at midnight, most of your devices are offline, those won't be included in the scan. So you want to scan when, when most of your devices are most likely to be online. Okay. So that being the case, you're going to do that. Uh, you can too, you choose whatever time zone it, you know, is, is best to kind of cover most of your items, you know, your devices, because if most of your devices are in Pacific time and you schedule it like for five o'clock Eastern time, then that will work. But if your devices are, in, you know, in Eastern time, you schedule it for, you know, five o'clock or 10 o'clock Eastern time, stuff like that's not going to work. Uh, if you want to get notifications, you can put your email address here. It will send you an email, you know, when the scan is finished. That's cool and all. If you're good at, if you don't like have an inbox that's flooded with email, you know, occasionally, so you can just pull it up and see, kind of gives you a quick reference. However, it also can become very annoying. So, you know, the thing is, if you're not going to look at these, I strongly suggest that you don't set up text messaging or emails for the scan. And then here's the last part. If you want other people within the organization who are in your tenable tenant to be able to view or execute or edit your scans, choose here. For us, most of the people that are in our tenable, they are administrators. So we don't necessarily want to lock them out. They may need to modify the scan because they may be working with my, one of my customers I'm working with one of their customers or something like that. And so you really want to change this to can edit in that situation. But in other scenarios, you can configure the permissions in Tenable to be very granular. All right. So this is just a basic scan. So um, let's see. What's my time here? All right. We have four minutes. I'm going to dig into a little bit well, deeper parts of the scan 
that most people probably don't talk about. So local port emulators, this is not something I, I use a lot. So the thing is for these, if somebody wants to fill that in the chat, please feel free to put that information. But I try to make sure I speak only on stuff that I'm familiar with. Okay. So it's hard to know everything. So discovery. So this says port emulators using WMI and NetStack commands. I'm assuming those are the commands it's using or SSH. So those are both enables assessment. All right. So these, you can do a default or custom assess assessment. So general settings, avoid potential false alarms, disable thorough, thorough test. That's that. And if you can go to customize, you can override the normal accuracy. So these things, once again, I don't do a lot of things here. Okay. But at least I want you to make sure you see these options because at times there may be some, some requirement that, you know, or some need that causes you to be able to in there or to need to enable these options. Can't get my words out. All right. So anyway, don't spend a lot of time there, but then when we get to reports, so you can override the number of verbosity right there. So you turn that on, you can tell like the, here your settings, I have limited disk space, report as little as possible, report as much as possible. That's something that we really don't change that much. So missing patches that have been superseded. This is enabled. Some people don't like it. I like it because the thing is a good example here is if Google Chrome, your own version 14, and let's say there've been 25 versions, that you need to update all the way up until the latest version well if you have this enabled it'll show all 25 versions versus i think if you turn this off it'll just show you need to go to this whatever version some people are annoyed some people that it, it's cool i like it turned on high results from plugins initiated as a dependency not really as familiar with that one but i typically leave that out as default now when we get to the advanced tab this is where i do do a few things i'll tell you that i think that you really need to know so when it comes to the advanced tab the debugging level. So say for instance, there are going to be times where you're going to scan stuff and scans are not going to be giving you information or you have a scan. And a good example of something that I'm fighting right with right now is we have a scan that scanned the device today, but there's a vulnerability that was, that's still showing up that was last detected on a device like in August, right? So you scan today and the current scans don't show that their vulnerability exists, but they existed back in August. And so in that scenario, what we found out is that a good example is like if you have a Windows 10 vulnerability and a device got updated to Windows 11, well, that uh, vulnerability that was for Windows 10 will never get fixed because the scan, even though the machine is on Windows 11, the scan has to be able, or the plugin that it uses to scan has to be able to validate the vulnerability is still, is still there or not. And in that scenario, the vulnerability just stays there. It never gets marked as fixed and it never detects it again. And so in that scenario, you may have to submit a support ticket or something like that. And if you have to submit a support ticket, let me show you why you need this. So what they're going to always ask you to do is they typically ask you to change the debugging level to three, which is full debugging and they ask you to change all audit trails to here. And you have to enable debugging. OK, so you want to turn this off. So these three steps, when you're submitting a support ticket to Tenable, this is typically the three things to ask for. I'm going to turn this off now. I'm going to set this back to level one and going to change this to uh, right there. I think that's where it was. All right. And though, so that's kind of the final option. So this is as far as creating the tenable scan, this is typically everything that you need to know in order to be able to create a agent scan. We'll get into network scans and stuff like that in future videos. But at this point, I'm going to stop. We're about, looks like about eight minutes in. So if you have comments, please leave those comments and I'm going to start doing videos of me responding to your comments. So, but anyway, thank you all for supporting the channel. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.